Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to today's video. Listen, a lot of people that don't know about plants and plant prices, etc. write a lot of dumb shit on the internet and I am here to read it and have a little laugh along. And this week, what do we have? I'm looking at it on my laptop right now. We have a wonderful article entitled Luxury Leaves, Rare and Crazy Expensive Houseplants from Around the World. I think you can guess where this is going. I'm not going to butcher the name of the author, but this was written on June 27th, 2022, and that will become important as we go along, guys, because these articles are recent. I haven't plucked these articles from 2020. I've plucked them from very recently. I also want to say that several websites have posted sort of versions of this article, which seems to be a pretty popular trend. If someone writes an article, people don't even write their own shit nowadays. People just recycle it literally word for word and sort of reprint it on whatever website. Just so you know, I'm not roasting this article specifically, I'm roasting pretty much every copy of this article. I don't know who wrote it first, I didn't do any research to find out who wrote it first because I don't think it's that important as it's pretty inaccurate anyway. But here we have it. So luxury leaves, rare and crazy expensive houseplants from around the world. So, the article starts by talking about the famous New Zealand Raphidophora tetrasperma that sold for nearly $20,000, I think. That's 20,000 US dollars in 2021. I think it was in June. I'm not actually familiar with New Zealand prices. I feel like it's similar to Australia kind of prices, but I really hope these guys got a bargain with this, I guess, because this was in 2021 when this thing sold. Nearly 20,000 US dollars. Now, I have quite a big opinion on Raphidophora tetrasperma, variegated, but it would appear that at this time, for whatever reason, it sold for an awful lot of money. I'm actually shocked. I thought the article had got the date of this auction wrong, by the way, and I thought it was 2020, but I looked it up and it, it actually is 2021, but this happened in. I have to tell you, it is my duty to tell you, they aren't worth that much, at least in the UK and the US. I think they are kind of a low to mid treble digits, so maybe about 350, 250. It really depends on what's being sold. If it's a good looking leaf, it might sell for 250, 300. If it's a bigger plant, it's going to sell for more, of course. 20,000 US dollars? No, no. I, I cannot believe it was worth that much in 2021. Anyway, moving on. What does the word auction bring to mind? PTSD. While many would say paintings and jewellery or whiskey and books, only a few will recognise that plants too go under the hammer. Yes, you read that right. Plants are auctioned too. For instance, a Raphidophora tetrasperma plant was sold for a whopping amount of $20,000. I'm going to skip over this because we've just talked about it. Native to Malaysia and Thailand, it was the most expensive plant to be sold on the website as of June 2021. As I've said, I've checked on that, that does seem to be true. I want you to note that at this point, the the article seems to know what a Raphidophora tetrasperma variegata is, right? I just, I just want to make that point. That's all I want to say. We will carry on, but I want to make that point. Similarly, many such plants are sold at immensely high prices and are very much in demand by rare plant collectors. However, all may not be as pricey or need to be auctioned. Curious to know about some of the most expensive house plants in the world and what makes them costly? Read on for more details. I don't suspect these are in any order, guys, by the way, but we're going to kick it off with the white pine bonsai tree. And here's my first point, right? First of all, how can this tree be apparently, apparently get this, here's the price range that they're giving us on this tree, between $50 and $1.3 million. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not setting us up very well, is it? It's not. It's really not. Okay, so bonsai trees belonging to the old pine family are rare and expensive because of their age, with some of them being over 200 years old. Fair enough. They need special care and frequent repotting to manage their roots, as does everything. The popular Japanese white pine, which survived the Hiroshima attack, took over 400 years and six generations of care to survive, and was later donated to the National Bonsai in Penying? Museum in Washington. As per reports, an 800-year-old bonsai was priced at US 1.3 million, which was sold at the International Bonsai Convention in Takamatsu, Japan. I'm gonna butcher names. Really sorry, guys. I am terrible with names. So what you're saying is there was one tree that was 1.3 million, and it was 800 years old, which 
Fair enough, okay. But that's a huge disparity there. I don't know why we started at 50. Are you going to explain how we started at 50? I don't think it does. No, that that's it for that plant. I can't tell you too much about that plant because I have no experience with that plant. I did look them up online and you can get small plants. I can't remember now how much the small plants were. I think there were more than 50 though, so I guess kudos. Like, do you want us to think that they're rare and expensive or not? I'm not quite sure, but I'm sure we can find out as we go along and pick up on the vibes of this article. Oh, straight in strong with the second plant, which by the way, there is no picture of. Yes, this is yes, yes, yes. So we have the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. Now we do actually have a decent price range this time, though I have to say due to tissue culture, these plants don't actually go for these prices anymore. I've been selling baby plants for about 600 pounds UK. And by baby, I mean like, you know, like an inch tall or something like that. So at one time, yes, those prices, I have to say were accurate. That's 5,000 to 10,000. That was kind of in the height of COVID though, and they were for full plants. So another expensive plant. The name of this variety of philodendron means spirit of the Holy Ghost as per Christianity and is rare owing to the fact it is an endangered species. I think it's probably not now. Am I right? Am I right? You can spot these scarcely as only select plant collectors and houseplant lovers own this rare beauty known for its narrow heart-shaped leaves. What? Also belonging to Brazil, like some other expensive houseplants on this list, it is so popular that people also buy the fake version made of paper or wear t-shirts with images of its leaves. What an odd thing to say. <laughs> That's so weird. Okay, you know what, fine. I Obviously they've been looking on Etsy, I guess. I don't know. On to the next plant very swiftly. Could you tell that they haven't really done any research and they can't really say much about the plant? I mean, it's pretty funny that they would call it heart-shaped anyway. It's probably the least heart-shaped plant that you could ever even hope to own. Moving on, and we're gonna, we're gonna really enjoy this one. So moving on, we have, get this, the variegated philodendron minima with no picture. Now, if they did have a picture, they'd probably be feeling really stupid about now. Because I'm pretty sure they're talking about here Raphidophora tetrasperma variegata, which is the thing they talked about in the beginning. The minima part I recognize, and a lot of people call Raphidophora tetrasperma, that's a mouthful. They call it Monstera minima. And it isn't, by the way, it's not Monstera at all. It never has been. It's not mini Monstera. It's not Monstera minima. It's nothing. It's not Philodendron minima. It is Raphidophora tetrasperma. Again, we're talking about the variegated one just like we did at the beginning. So these people have no clue what they're talking about. It's fine, they're civilians. I'm not that mad, I'm not that mad. So the price, 50 to 9,000. Where did you get that from if you don't even know what the plant is? Do we really need to include the 50? Because I tell you now, the $50 plant is not variegated, so I don't really know why we're including that but never mind. Native to some parts of Asia, including Malaysia and Thailand, having a clean block pattern, this house plant with yellow and bright green leaves is known for its minimal colors. Is that, is, did you just think, ooh, that sounds about right because it's philodendron minima? Is that what you've done? I feel like that's what you've done. I feel like that's what you've done because you have no idea what this fucking plant is. While the smaller plants are not very expensive, ranging about $50, the larger ones may have a high price tag owing to their rarity. I'm sorry, that does not make sense. So small versions are absolutely fine. You can get them for 50 quid. But because other large ones, so because plants grow, they can become literally worth $8,000. Did no one read this back and just think that's... What? Other than difficulties in propagation and time taken to grow, it is rare because of its unstable variegation. Oh my god. Additionally, it is only cultivated by specific growers and difficult to source. No, it's not. 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 Guys, they're everywhere in Thailand, okay? They're everywhere in Thailand. A lot of people tell me that they're not that available. At supplier level, yes, they are. I actually have some in my shop growing as we speak, right? They are available. I'm sick and tired of people thinking this plant is not available. It's really, really doing my head in. So anyway, that's short and sweet. They have no idea what they're talking about. Again, no pictures. No pictures, so we don't either. I don't even know what happens if you Google this plant. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that Raphidophora tetrasperma comes up. I don't even know. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Next up on the little list is Monstera oblique, 
with a picture of an Adam Sonia. Now, I'm going to give them that. I'm going to give them a pass because you know what? That happens all the time. I'm going to give it a pass. That's a huge misconception about a bleaker in Adam Sonia. Everyone knows by now. They look very similar. People think they can get a bleaker in garden centers and they can't. But let's just see. Let's just see what people say. For once, you know, the low end price on this plant is about right. The high price. God, did they reach that much in COVID even? $7,000? That's I mean, maybe, maybe it did. Maybe it did. I thought they went as high as about 5,000 US dollars in COVID. And that's for like, you know, a mature plant with maybe, I don't know, four leaves or something like that. But God, if it got to 7,000, that's impressive. These are popularly known as plants with more holes than leaves. I think you mean more hole than leaf? Owing to its interesting pattern of the natural holes on the leaves, this variety of monstera can be grown only by experts and it takes a long time. It finds its origins in Central and South America and stem cuttings are priced around $200. Probably now, yeah. However, the cost can reach around 7,000 for a potted plant, but the easily available one, can't speak today, known as Monstera adansonii, is often sold in its name at a similar price. Yes, that last part is true. However, again, we're saying that a small one is 200 and a big one is 7,000. That's just not the case. To be honest, you can almost get a medium one for that price. Everyone should be able to get a small oblique now for $200, I would think. And if you can't, look somewhere else because somewhere will have one. I will give them credit here because they do seem to realize Adansonii and Oblica are different, but it might have been a little bit better to say that Adansonii are sold in garden centers rather than they are sold as Oblica because it makes it sound like you can kind of get them both kind of anywhere. And they could have clarified that a little bit better, but at least they seem to know something. So we'll give them a metaphorical point. Next on the list, guys, for rare and expensive plants around the world. Are you ready? Next on the list, we have none other than Hoya Carnosa Compacta. I'm not making it up. I'm not making this up. I swear to you, I'm not making this up. And wait till you hear the price range. Wait till you hear it. So this plant goes for apparently 40,000 US dollars, anywhere between, and six and a half thousand US doll hairs. What? Where the fuck do they find these prices? Anyway, well, let's, let, I digress, let's carry on. Let's give them a chance, let's give them a chance. Fleshy and curled dark green leaves characterize the Carnosa compacta variety of Hoya, which is also called the Hindu rope plant. I'm pretty sure that's offensive and we don't call it that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, guys. I don't call it that. It sometimes bears flowers too and leaves with a similar waxy texture. Yeah. Its price depends on the rarity of its variegation and foliage. This, along with a few other varieties of Hoya, belong to some parts of Eastern Asia and Australia. What you're saying is the rarity depends on the variegation and the foliage. The only Hoya Carnosa compacta that I know of that is worth a few bob, as we say in England, worth a bit of money, is the Geordie's Silver, which is essentially a compactor with a lot of silver splash on it. It's stunning. I would love to have one. I think they're beautiful. They are very, very, very hard to get, okay? But are they six and a half thousand US dollars hard to get? I think no, I think no. And by what this is saying, I must be a rich lady because I have a couple of different types of variegated compactor. I have the Mauna Loa, which is variegated on the inside. And then I have, oh my God, what do you call it? Is it regardless? I can't remember what it's called, sorry guys, but the one with the variegation on the margin and it also has some chunks of variegation uh, as well. I can't really, it's a stretch for me to believe that any form of compactor was ever worth six and a half thousand dollars. If I am wrong guys, please leave a comment and explain, give me the tea. That I did not expect to see this plant in this list. I really did not expect this, this is crazy. So higher heads, please enlighten me, extrapolate, expand, explain, evaluate. But the thing is, if Jodie's silver is on the high end of rarity, right, an all green version is on the low end, which I think is what they're saying, $40, I don't know at this point, what the fuck is in the middle? What the fuck is in the middle of those valuations? Guys, I think we're all rich. All these higher owners literally make it rain. That is unbelievable. Next entry, we have the variegated monstera. And of course, they have placed a picture of a Thai constellation in there. Let's see if they can differentiate the two, shall we? 
I guess it can be pretty difficult to civilians, I like to say non-planty people, i.e. the people who wrote this article. I guess it could be pretty difficult to discern which one is which with Ty and Albo, I guess. $700 to $5,000? And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that, well, this is this is COVID prices. And it's like, yes, yes, yes. If, if, if something ever sold for $5,000, if it did, again, let me know because I missed a lot in 2020, as you guys know. But literally, this is written in 2022. And when you Google these plants, guys, these hits don't come up. So I don't understand where these people are getting from. Unless it's like the last article we covered, and I will link that in the description if you're interested. That was a hoot. Unless they've gone on Etsy and just ordered it high to low, which really does my head in because nobody does that. Nobody does that. And Etsy is known for doing this. So I'm not really sure where these prices are from. One of the rarest and most expensive house plants native to southern Mexico and northern Panama. Panama? Panama. Sorry. Variegated Monstera has many varieties. Yeah, all right. While a basic green can be bought for around $50, I would argue that's expensive personally, unless it's a full plant, like a big plant, the prices of variegated plants can go a lot higher. Yes. Fact. Cool. One of the reasons contributing to its rarity, one, its pigmentation. We've been using the word variegation. I don't know why we're, we're switching it up, but fine. Which lends a different pattern to each leaf, making them distinctive from one another. Additionally, since their propagation is slow and can only be grown in labs using stem cuttings, they are rare. Other Monstera plants, like the Monstera deliciosa albo, are difficult to find to... That's really weird to put a comma in it. Other plants like the Monstera deliciosa albo are difficult to find too, but serves as a great indoor plant. Right, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. So they're talking about the Thai constellation and the albo here so that they know, they know those two different plants, except they haven't got a clue what they're talking about at all. Like not even remotely. So we have, on one hand, we have one of the reasons contributing to its rarity, one, its pigmentation, which lends a different pattern to each leaf, making them distinctive from one another. Additionally, since their propagation is slow and can only be grown in labs using stem cuttings, they are rare. So that is the Thai. I think they're talking about the Thai. They can be slow, right? They never used to be back in the day. And the shit thing is, I hailed the Thai constellation a long time ago, by the way. I know this is a segue, as being a very easy plant. And honestly, guys, they were. The new batch of Thai that's the sort of modern Thai that you get is wildly different from the old Thai. I promise you, I promise you. And if you bought a Thai way back when, around about when I got mine, so this is like 2019, something like that, 2018, 2019, you should probably notice a quality difference because the new Thai just don't seem as strong. So whatever mothers they've used, they're, they're weaker than the originals and they're just, they're not as good because the new Thai have problems with rot and all sorts. They are just not easy. I might have to do a video talking about it and basically taking back what I said because it was true for back then. But it's not as true now. They're not super difficult. Don't get me wrong. Don't be put off. But they're not as easy as I originally told you in 2019, was it? But yeah. Anyway, it's not true that they can only be grown in a lab. The original plan was created in a lab in Thailand, hence the name Thai Constellation, which by beautiful coincidence also stands for TC. So no, you, you can you can grow them <laughs> and you can propagate them via stem cuttings like everything else. But no, you can't only grow them in a lab. I don't... Good Lord, where do these people get this from? Because I don't feel like this information is in one place. I feel like you'd have to Frankenstein loads of different weird facts from weird places together to get this. So I'm just a bit confused. But then we have... This is my favorite bit. Other Monstera plants like the Monstera Deliciosa Albo are difficult to find too. Hate that comma, but serves as a great indoor plant. Well, yes, they kind of all do. They're all house plants, but okay. They aren't difficult to find. I'm not going to go into it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't switch off. I'm not going to go into it. But they are not difficult to find. I think the Thai are literally more difficult to find and they are produced in labs. Albo are everywhere. Guys, a simple Google search bring them up. The price obviously depends on country to country. UK, really cheap, 50 quid, 30 quid, something like that. Not going to set you back too much for a leaf. US, obviously a bit more fine, but generally they are available. They are available, I promise you. Big plants in garden centers, they're available, but they're low quality. So honestly, if you want a really nice plant, I'm going to recommend you actually do do it from a cutting and you grow it out because you're probably going to get a nicer quality variegate if you go for a nice cutting because the stuff in garden centers, yikes. If, if any of you have found a good one in garden centers in the last 12 months, please feel free to tag me on it on Instagram because I haven't seen one. Not saying they don't exist, but generally the, the standard out there, at least in UK and Europe, 
is not good. Next on the list, moving on, moving forward, we have the philodendron totem. But apparently, this goes from between $400 and four and a half thousand doll hairs. Now, I don't know if they're confusing that with a different plant there. I'm going to put it out there. They might be confusing that with philodendron polypoidioides, which a lot of people confuse with totem. It's not. It's a different plant. Maybe that's the case. I mean, has anybody ever paid four and a half thousand US dollars for a totem? I hope not. This variety of philodendron has an interesting history contributing to its rarity. After being discovered in 1957 on the Amazon, the government of Brazil announced the area as protected, limiting the number of plants to be cut for further propagation. A medium-sized philodendron totem may cost comparatively less than a larger one. Yes. Well, yes, generally smaller houseplants cost less than larger ones. I, they are, they ran out of shit there, didn't they? They just ran out of shit. Next we have the Half Moon Philodendron Pink Princess, with a picture of a regular pink princess, of course. I don't know. First off, half moon is usually a term referring to variegation on a leaf where half of it is a color, variegated color, pink, white, yellow, whatever, and then half is just green. That is what half moon means. It's nothing special. It can happen to anyone. I advise you not to pay more for it if you want to. That's cool. You do you. But I personally would not. That's not something I look for. But did they ever go, guys? Did they ever go for a thousand pounds? Sorry, dollars? Did that, that, that ever happen in COVID? Because obviously it's never happened since COVID, but did it happen in COVID? Like really? Because that's crazy. $100, yeah, sure, no problem. But $1,000? This is scary, isn't it? It's actually scary. I think the highest I saw them go for in COVID was probably about $600. Okay, anyway. Characterized by bright pink shades on dark green leaves. This pink princess philodendron can thrive both in soil and water. What a random fact. And is native to Colombia. While the small plants with few leaves come at an estimated price of $100 to US $300, larger ones cost much more. This is exactly the same as a smaller plant costs less than a larger plant. We are running out of steam. Hats off to this author for trying. Again, the whole thing is out of date. Pink Princess is currently in garden centers and they are very affordable for small plants. I'm not going to talk about Half Moon because it's a completely different thing, but you can get Pink Princesses out there, guys. Don't, don't be don't be don't be paying that don't be paying that literally anthurium regal what no picture either by the way we don't get a picture of this one all right price what approximately a hundred dollars to 400 us dollars was it ever that much my this is such an eye-opener, honestly. With larger leaves compared to other houseplants, this particular variety looks very different from other varieties belonging to its family. Pointed tips and bright veins make this plant rare. Rewind. This particular variety looks very different, very different to other varieties because it has pointed tips and bright veins. You're describing most velvety anthuriums. You've got Crystallinum, you've got Vegetii, you've got Waraquinum, what, what else? Uh, Magnificum even. And guess what? They're also very different from other varieties as well. But you know what would have helped? If you'd actually put a picture in of the plant, that would have been absolutely great. But I guess we're just, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. You know, houseplants are very visual things. And if you want to get people interested in houseplants, it really helps to put pictures in, guys. I, cause I'm, I can only assume that they want people to be interested in their article because that's why they wrote it. I digress. You know what? I digress. I digress. This is a losing battle. I do think it's going to piss readers off at this point to not include pictures, guys. If I was just a civilian reading this, I'd be getting a little bit annoyed. And granted, yeah, I might Google a plant. I might Google a plant if I cared enough. If I cared enough. Enough. But it would just be nice to use pictures because some pictures have been used. It's not like the other article we read together where they didn't use anything. These guys are using something. So I don't really know why they're doing it sometimes and not other times. It's it's, it's wild. It's wild. Little note on Anthurium Regal, they aren't worth that much now. At least in Europe, they're absolutely flooded. So maybe in the US, they go for a bit more, but don't be paying those prices in Europe, guys. And that includes the UK, just don't do it. They're, they're everywhere. You can get one if you want. They're not the easiest Anthurium out there. So I would actually recommend something like a Crystallinum instead, much tougher, much easier. But if you want to try one, honestly, they're probably approaching prices where you can have a go if you want to do that. So we have here the mature fiddle leaf fig tree. Mm -hmm. 
So can someone actually explain to me, right, what the obsession is with fiddly figs? Because I literally, when I started my plant journey, so that was 2018 was when I started going hardcore into plants, and that's kind of when I started off my channel, so to speak. I knew that fiddly figs were everywhere. Now, personally, I didn't find them very attractive. I still don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't, I don't like all of this. I don't like it. It's just, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But why? Was it everywhere? And why were they so expensive? Because the only thing I noticed really was that they were all over like interior design channels or like influencer YouTubes that weren't into plants, but they did all their room out, all decor and, you know, boho and all that, and then they were there. But other than that, I don't actually get why they're so expensive. They're certainly not a rare tree. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I'm pretty sure that ficus, is it ficus lorata is what it's actually known as? Not rare at all. Not rare at all. Let's just see what they say anyway. Approximately $80 to $400. Now, I can probably get on that because definitely places charge a lot for, shall we say, trees at that point. So I can actually get on that almost at those prices. Again, if those prices are accurate, let me know. I feel like that's possibly one of the more accurate prices on this list, to be honest, just because if it does have that background, then it's going to be bought more. I guess it's fashionable. Fashion pays, you know what I mean? A tropical rainforest plant native to West Africa with dark and bold foliage, it needs excessive humidity to thrive. Oh, okay. I didn't think that was the case. Is it? God, it's only a ficus, Jesus. This can reach up to 50 feet in height and is often preferred by home decor enthusiasts and plant lovers for their living spaces. Okay, so it literally says it right there. So it's probably for that reason it's expensive then. But you've got to think, if it's available in these places and home decor enthusiasts that have no idea about plants can find these plants. It's not very rare, is it? Like, when has it ever been rare? Am I wrong? Maybe there's a national shortage at some point. I don't even get it. I don't even get it. I don't really like this plant for decor, right? But I tell you what, if you want something like this with a low footprint for your home, you could go for the other popular option that people go for. And that is the Strelitzia nicolai, which is the bird of paradise plant. That is the one that produces the white flowers, not the orange flowers, just because it grows a little bit more friendly to a household environment. It looks a little bit nicer. It's a little bit heavier on the foliage. It takes a very small footprint in your home because it will grow very, very tall and fluted. So if you want an alternative, try that. This is not one of the rarest houseplants in the world. This is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. Please, guys, we, we have to stop just writing articles, going on Etsy and searching, you know, prices high to low on a plant and then writing shit about them online. We've got to stop it. We don't need to do these things. That takes more effort than just going on Etsy and taking an average of the first page. That takes more effort, more effort to actually order them like that and go through them. So today I learned that Hoya Carnosa Compacta is rare as shit and we all need to go out and make bank on it. Secondly, did you know that smaller houseplants cost less? than larger ones. Leave a comment telling me what you learned today. But for now, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.